Hey guys, welcome. <laughs> it's a beautiful, lovely, rainy spring day. It is quite lovely though. It is. We'll take it. it. Is. Yeah. 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 So. A couple of days have been actually hot. They have been. It was almost 90 when we left on Monday. It was lovely. I was in heaven, finally. <laughs> like got home, put on some shorts. I was ready to take a walk, and then Chris napped for like an hour and a half, and I was just like, are you ever going to get out of bed so I can go on a walk? <laughs> Hi, Terry, we just started. Are you in there? Yeah, can we help you? We're here. Okay, right. Alrighty, so today, I hope everybody is doing lovely. I'm going to switch it up just a little bit. I figured we haven't really done any beating stuff ever, maybe. And ever. that's where that's where I started. Yeah. On was on the bead side back. You were a bead girl. I was a bead girl way back in the day. And um, this is a class that I taught many a weekend. I think we did it at least once a month while I was out on retail whenever we had super regular classes. We're trying to work on our way back there. Um, we've got Melinda. She's coming in again. She's teaching some weaving classes. It's very exciting. Uh, I don't guess I remember Melinda. Oh. Or do I? Um, she Tell took Jen, do. she took Jen's classes a lot, but she has been coming back in. She's been helping restock a little bit. She is kind of recently retired and looking for things to do. So that's that's where we get them. You came up with. <laughs> Alrighty, so this is what is called a leather wrap bracelet, and it is it is not hard. It's a lot of fun. Um, anybody can make one of these, and you can make a ton of them for all the people in your life, or you can have a ton. I have a ton at home because it was one of my favorite things to make. Um, but apparently. I've gained a little weight because none of them fit anymore. So I, I need to take all of them apart. Um, you need to start doing like this. Yeah, do some wrist exercises. Yeah, limp wrist exercises. <laughs> it's probably all the typing. Because I'm like, how is my wrist getting bigger? Or anyways, but this is what we got. So this is a leather wrap bracelet. Thanks. So this one has uh, five wraps. We are only going to make ones with two today because I doubt you guys want to sit through us putting all of these beads onto leather string. So basically all it is, is just one really, really, I mean, you could make this, you, you could wear this as a necklace. You could wear all sorts of ways. So this is quite long. That's how long it is. Um, it is leather cord. So just some sort of leather cord. This is two millimeter cord. This one that I have in my hand is made with one millimeter round leather cord. Um, you can find both of these on our website if you just type in round leather cord or leather lace. It should pull up. And I think I actually sent Tony an email the other day with some links if he wanted to drop them in there just with a, a search to pull it up for you. Um, so you need, I, I pulled us a yard each of leather cord. That should go around most people's wrists twice. If you're a little bit bigger, you might want a little bit more. You know, you if you want, obviously, the more wraps you want to go around, the more lace you will need. Um, so at least a yard, if not a little bit more. Uh, I think two yards, you know, you'd be really safe to do quite a ways away. You could, you could do 18 wraps. Yeah, you could do a lot of wraps. <laughs> so some sort of leather cord, uh, round leather cord is ideal. And then you will need a button. So this, I have a little crystal button on here, which I'm going to cut off because this bracelet no longer fits me. So I'm going to cut this one off for me and use it for my bracelet. Um, Denny is going to be using this little bone button, but you can use like this one. I just went to Joann's, I think, and I bought a couple things. The only thing is the holes need to fit the lace. So we had these antler buttons. These will fit a one millimeter lace. They don't fit the two. Now you could drill it out and make it a little bit bigger, obviously. But uh, so antler buttons, any sort of button will work. Just a two hole button that will fit the lace that you want to put through it. So this is just a metal button that I got once again at the fabric store. Um, so you need a button, you need lace, and then you also, this makes it really easy. Now you don't have to specifically use this natural silk cord. However, this specific a cord comes with a needle already attached to the end. Oh. It's two yards, which is typically enough to do the two wrap around, so you don't have to get any extra. And with the needle attached to the end, it just makes it a lot easier. You don't have to worry about the needle falling off or any of that. But if you are using beads that have really small holes, this is a, it's a point oh seven millimeter cord. So it is a little bit on the large side. So if whatever beads you have, have a really small hole, or you just want to use a thread that you have at home, you can 100% just use like regular sewing machine thread. I guess you could also probably use our 
like a uh, nylon thread for our sewing machines mm -hmm. if you wanted. But for this bracelet, I just used regular sewing thread that I have just to put through my home sewing machine. Um, and I just went through each hole twice just to kind of reinforce it. You could loop it around and just have two strands of, of um, thread at the same time. But absolutely, you can do that. And then you just need some sort of a needle. Probably a small harness needle, as long as it goes through the holes, yeah, it should work, like if you had a small harness needle. But once again, these have needles attached to the end of the cord, so that's what we're going to be using, so we don't have to worry about a needle today. We also don't have to worry about it falling off, which is quite lovely. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then you just need your strand of beads. So today, Denny and I are both doing turquoise. This is my first stab at jewelry. Yeah, Denny hasn't done this, so I get to teach him. So we've got uh, beads, really the... Like, obviously, I have two different sizes of beads here. So really, just however bulky you want it, this could honestly almost be used as a defense mechanism. <laughs> it's, it's pretty sturdy. It still flies with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Swat them out. So whatever size bead you want. And you can also do graduated beads. So I brought in a couple um, metal spacers that we might try to play with here. Uh, so you can graduate your beads a little bit if you want to and kind of make this uh, fun... Yeah. It's almost like a pulse yeah. looks like going through. So have fun with it. You can really like this can be an exponential project depending on what you have in your arsenal and what you want to use. And then I'm actually going to do something a little bit more fun. Ooh. I found these donuts when we were in Tucson this year and I thought that they were really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a donut attached in the middle of mine for an accent piece. Um, and then I'm going to put the beads on either side and then they'll... Like with Captain America where they can hit the little thing on their wrist and they're like... Activate. <laughs> yeah, exactly like that. And so this, I actually have to cut more cord because once I cut my yard in half, it wasn't enough to do this style. But I'm going to do two wraps. So I'll have beads that go around like that. So I'll have the donut in the middle and then two wraps of turquoise on either side. Nice. So that's my plan. But we'll get you started and then I can do my fun shenanigans. So let's, let's see here. We'll cut our beads apart. Boop. Those are cut. Those are cut. And then we're going to get out this. So we already, you fold your leather lace in half for how much ever you have, and then you thread it onto your button. Really straightforward. I'm not even this, looking. By the way, this is really handy, having this hair on hide. I know. Beads don't roll off. Exactly. Okay. When I walked in here, I was like, oh, I didn't get bead mats. And then I was like, wait a minute. I have leather. I don't need a bead mat. I have a whole table. Yeah. So... I do love these bracelets. Guys, you people that have been asking for owls, I hope everybody is so excited because I have planned out for Denny. We, we are exhilarated. It is. It's going to be a really cool. On Friday, we've got an awesome video that I'm really excited um, about. And then we have another one. So we're going to do one lasered owl coming up with some stones in it. And then we're going to do a tooled owl here, I think, in June. I've got it scheduled out so Denny has some time to practice his owl skills <laughs> for you guys. Um, listen, Dean. You don't have anything nice to say. You know where you can go. <laughs> Alrighty, so first of all, you have to take the entire thing off of the spool because you need the end that doesn't have the needle. Because uh -oh. obviously, like, you have to pull it all the way through. So you have to take the whole cord off the thing, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the end that doesn't have the needle, and we're going to tie it to the end um, a little bit farther than the button. So you really don't want beads because what we're, what we're going to do is as you get to the other side of... Your thing, you're going to make loops where you put the, the, the button in. Oh, adjustment loop. Exactly. Uh, and so, um, like this one, I started my first bead just a little bit past, but like just slightly under my button. Just give you know? yourself a little room. Exactly. Give yourself a little room so that knot, whenever you put it on, kind of has yeah. a spot to go. Like, and even this one, I probably should have put it a little bit farther. Like, should have put that first bead a little bit farther out. Um so, like this one, you pretty much, you just want to start the first bead at the tip of your button, ideally. So that way the knot on the other end, end has a spot to lay. So, what you want to do is you're going to tie this onto one of the strands. Like, just, just right, 
kind of where the end of the button is. With the granny knot? Yep, just with whatever knot you feel like it's going to hold. Is it granny knot or overhand knot? Is that right? Yeah, that looks good. Is it? Yep. And then also, I didn't grab any, but if you have like bead fix or like super glue, once you're done with this, you can go back to those little knots and you just put like a little drop of super glue. That way it just holds everything together. Could, and could it, you burn them like you do on a piece of thread? Uh, probably not with this because it's silk and oh. it's not waxy. Oh, yeah. So if uh, you did have thread. like a wax thread, you might be able to burn it and then it would hold. But for this, we're just going to put a little uh, dab of glue there. That's right, Dean. And now I just cut this extra tab off. Yep. <coughs> All righty. So we've got that on. Guys, this is this is really easy, but it's it's it, it's a lot of fun. It looks pretty complicated to me. And they're really cool. <laughs> okay, so now we need to find the needle, which is right there. And you're going to load a bead on. Load a bead. Load a bead. Wow, this is like a it's like wire. Twisted wire. Uh-huh. Yep. Okay, I'm going to load this bead. I want to... You could, like, load it right here. Would be perfect. Okay. There we go. <laughs> okay, here I am again. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've got a corner, okay, William. something new for you, Denny, but you still need to do it on camera. Okay, do I load the bead all the way to the... All mouth? the way. Okay. Andrea, um, we are using six millimeter beads, but you can honestly use whatever size bead you want. Okay, I'm all right. loaded. So we're loaded. So we're all the way here. So what we're going to do is we're going to secure, once again, you kind of want that first bead just right at the edge of your button. So what we're doing is now we're going to take the needle. We're going to go, so you have your two cords, right? So where the where the bead comes out, we're going to go up and over the back. Okay, hang on just a second. Okay. Hold, stay right where you're at. Hold on. Tony's going to get this real good. All right. So there it is. So yeah. you've got the bead. So your your thread is coming out. So now this is the same way with lacing. If you're, if you, the way you do it the first time is the way you want to always do it from then on out. So your thread is coming out over the top of your bottom strand. And so we're always going to go from the top of the strand down and then under and you're gonna put back through the bead yep back through the bead and you're gonna pull it all the way through and make sure that you get all the slack out of the top end up with a big yeah so like that, and mm, there it is. So you just make a loop around that bottom strand. And then also the same way with the top, because what you're doing is you're going to come out, and then you're going to loop around. So you want to come like out on the back side and then loop around to the front side. From underneath to the top. Well, it doesn't really matter. You could come. As long as you do it the same. Every as time. long as you do it the same. Yep, so you can either go underneath and come around the top and over, or if you wanted, if you're coming out the top, and then you can loop around. You just always have to go one way or the other. So, and then you want to do it the same so that loops the same. So I'm now. Hold the, hold the bead on the same place on the cord. Exactly. So we're going to load another bead. <laughs> on the bead load. <laughs> there we go. We're going to pull it all the way down. Across the top. And then loop it. Oh, we do need to get that. I lost it. What video? So since we went over the top the first time, we're going over the top again. Exactly. Over yeah. the top, under the cord, back through, and then under. Make sure you keep everything pulled up taut. And then you're going to go back over. And that's what you do, guys. Over and over. <laughs> over and over again. So Denny will keep going on this one, and I will get mine started. And I'm going to use some of these graduated things, since we already forgot to do that on yours. 
I can graduate at any time though, right? If I wanted to. Exactly. Yeah, you can graduate it at any time. And also, I thought that these would be really cute to disperse in between your um, your beads. These okay. little these little guys. All right. Just every once in a while. Yeah. How would you hold them to do this? Put the ear. Oh, yeah. okay. So these, we're going to use these a little bit here and there. I don't, I don't know if it's going to focus. There it is. These little fun metal spacers. You should try yeah. really small holes in a cabochon and use that as your end. I was thinking of drilling holes in a yeah. cabochon. What yeah, they actually drill the hole so. in for cabochon. So we did, um, Garrett. If you're in the world here, I sent you an email right before this started. Uh, we did attempt to drill some cabs and didn't didn't go well. We broke them. But yeah, you can't, um, Crystal. You could totally, if you had like this. Honestly, I probably could use this as my button and then just put the knot of the leather through the middle and then pull it out. Um, but yeah, you can use, I mean, whatever, whatever you've got for a button, as long as your thread fits or your lace fits through it. So the thread, the thread coming through your bead, you're making sure that's your, your, uh, wire or whatever that's called is pulled tight. Yeah. Yeah. You want to make sure that just every time you go through, it's taut. Every, every on both sides, around, around the leather cord. Am I right bead. so far? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Yeah, you're doing great. You haven't messed up yet, Denny. <laughs> yeah, that's oh. the key word. Oh, Andre. No, I need to run out and grab it. I will do that right after this. I saw it this morning, and then I was trying. I had a couple other emails that I needed to follow up on with some stuff. So I I did that, but I will get it right after this video, Andrea. Also, we got these beads at Springfield Leather. I put the links in all the chats. Um, yeah, when it comes to the bead strands, I mean, if you have somewhere local that sells bead strands, you know, and, and you want to go find some cool stones, or if there's a stone that you're looking for, um, you can shoot me an email, just Liz at Springfield Leather, and uh, I'll see what options we have in the millimeter size that you're looking for. So just just give me a holler. Is it supposed to look spiral on one side and straight on the other side like this? Yes, that is. Okay. There's really no way around that. Okay. That's <laughs> good. I was just wondering. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put in one of these little critters. Yeah, Karen, that was that was something else that we used. To, if, if somebody did want to use um, a different string, you can do that. You can just put super glue on the end of a couple inches of your string and kind of make your own needle. This is really cool, hey, this man. needle, though. I forgot, Liz, do you remember we, <clears throat> that you and I are supposed to do the beginner leather carving class? So now that you're making Denny do beads, oh, yes, we need to that. readjust the schedule that you have made and add us into the schedule. We can do it later. I'm really excited about my schedule. Mm -hmm. Wow, Denny. You know what I heard? No. You're not I'm excited not. about your leather I want, class. I want to take it when I'm not on air. Well, that's too bad. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. I guess you'll have to come in on a Saturday to prepare to be prepared. Crystal, I don't know how much smaller of a size we could have started with. It was literally like the, it was a tiny bit. But the problem was, is that I was talking to Chris about it when we were trying to do it. I think most of the time he said that whenever they drill cabs, you know, like they lay out the cab on the slab of stone before they start cutting it. And so once the, the slab is like laid out with where they're going to actually cut the cab out, Chris said that typically they will drill the hole then, and then they will do the cab. Um... So they'll get that hole in there first. And we were trying to drill, like it was just a teeny little hole that we were putting, like 
like minuscule, like probably a 30 second hole that we were trying to drill through these cab tips that were already finished and the tip just cracked out of it. So. Yeah, Dean, totally make some popcorn. I don't even think you would need to drill the popcorn. You'd probably just stab this needle through popcorn. That would be a weird bracelet though, so. You just want to eat it. <laughs> you just. Oh, it could be like those bracelets that the kids used to wear with yeah. like the little thingy that you eat off. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is leather cord. It is. See, there's leather in here and yeah. beads. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, this hide is not, if we were using pink beads, it would be great, but it's a little dark for the brass beads. Maybe I should still have gotten a bead mat, but it's fine. We're always kicking around beads on retail anyways, so what are you going to do? Unpopped. So not popcorn, just corn. <laughs> you just want dried corn. Hey, Nick, you got some corn you want to send us? It's probably hanging out in the cornfield somewhere. I haven't seen any yet this morning. All right, Vinny, don't mess it up while I'm gone. I'm going to go get some water in my jug. Yeah, because I didn't bring it. I didn't I bring a squirt your, bottle. I don't think a squirt bottle to drink out of. I got one over here. So guys, I did bring in, we've got a couple of samples or some tests that uh, Stacy and I worked on yesterday for the video on Friday um, with the owl. And I just think it's going to be awesome. It's going to be cool. I think it's going to be cool. We're, we're doing stone inlays. We're going to do six inlays in, in one. So there'll be plenty of chances for Denny to try and try again. <laughs> try. <laughs> try. <laughs> That's the key word right there, try. <laughs> Chevy did save a bunch of cobs from last year. He said we could have those. Corn cob, a corn cob bracelet. Danny, I made something to help you. You did? What did you make? Back in the day when I did macrame, you had like a little board, mm -hmm. so you tie your finished end to this, and then stick your loops down through here, so it kind of holds it uh, straight. Uh, I don't know. Good, fine idea. Well, there we gave go. And I just happened to have something to tie it with. Then oh, you're not you touching your face. Yeah. yeah. No, you're good. Thank you. I did, but that's okay. You saw me fighting, didn't I you? I did. <laughs> Tell you what, sometimes I do miss teaching my bead classes. It was a lot of fun. Man, that, that seems like so long ago. Anderson Got me a little, a little holder. A little holder, which I could probably mess up in a hurry. I think the biggest thing is just making sure that you keep all your loops tight as you go, because you can't really tighten it later. Yeah, and, and I noticed you can't just pull them up tight. The thread doesn't want to just run through those beads. Yeah, you kind of have to do one side at a time. you got to pull it from the top to get your loop down to the bottom and then pull the, the slack out of your loop at the bottom. What size hole on a standard bead? Um, that's a good question. Maybe a millimeter, actually? I'll look at some of these beads. Some of them, I think we do have two different uh, size silk cords. So if you do end up with some really um, tiny holes in your beads. We don't have to tie them right now. All right. This is from back in your macrame. Mm -hmm. uh, 
These are a one millimeter hole in these stone beads. <clears throat> And make sure you scooch up your beads right next to each other. This is a really good podcasting activity, too. Talking about macrame. Mm -hmm. You ever used to watch the show Taxi? No. I don't think she ever knew there was a show called Taxi. What was the guy's Reverend Jim? What was his? I don't know. He was in Back to the Future. Uh, Christopher, Christopher Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd yeah. yeah. Anyway, he played a guy named Reverend Jim on that show, and he was always he was just a little bit off the wall. <laughs> I think every character that Christopher Lloyd played was off the wall. He spent a year of his life macromanic out, she said. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, I spent a lot of time macromaning when I was younger, but not I like one thing. <laughs> Keith loves taxi. It's a good show, I thought. The beaded lizards from the 90s. Like those keychains, Crystal? Oh, I did something wrong there. Why did you do that? Oh, no. Ever watch the Sniper Thrillogy? What's the Thrillogy? I don't believe I did. I never watched that. Was that with Tom Berenger? Yep, this is Denny on. Denny's the one beating. <laughs> Denny's the one tying knots in this thread. He is beating. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Is that right? Oh no, I've got to go under. Well, you, yeah, you still have to go back through the bead. I think it'll be fine when you go through the bead. Okay. Yeah, it just looks weird. I, th that bottom loop doesn't particularly matter. I think it might show a little bit if you kind of go the wrong way. Um, but since it's just going down and back up, it shouldn't. It shouldn't really affect the look very much. That number six. This is number six. Yep, number six. It sure is. Karen, my mom had both of her knees done last year. Follow what your physical therapist is saying. Exercise your knee. Do your exercises. Rick also just had both of his knees done. Could you saddle stitch the beans in? I'm going to assume you mean the beads. Uh, I'll be saddle stitching your beans. I guess maybe if you wanted to do, it might be a little bit awkward. 
haven't tried it. I guess if you looped around and then on both sides and then... Yeah. I almost feel like, though, you'd have four... Because you have to go through the beads, loop, and then I think you'd have to go back through the beads to hold them in place. So I don't know how it would look on top to bottom. You might, that might be a little bit weird. Um, and then. I, like you'd have to make sure that you had bigger holes because if you had to go through it four times. I just don't know. I don't know. Well, it's just like everything else. You can do whatever you want to. Yeah, you can give it a try. It'll, give it a shot. it'll, be, it'll just be different than this. That's right. <laughs> There's always got to be that one that goes down to the next B, so one is always going to look different than the other. Correct, yeah. Yeah, you're always going to have a moving loop and then a stationary loop. <laughs> These are all real turquoise, you guys. Every one of them is different. They're pretty cool. Did it say where that turquoise was from? Where's that little tag? South, South American South American turquoise. South American turquoise. Sorry that you're in pain, Dean. Maybe look at getting your knees replaced. You ever do you do over, under, through the same ones? Yes, exactly. Yep, you have to go through the bead twice. So you go up through it once, you loop around the top, and then you come back down and out, and then you move to the next bead. So always twice. Otherwise, it wouldn't stay on the cord. And then what is, you said Mary June's wrist were about six inches, mm -hmm. would be a comfortable fit. Yeah. So... Once Denny gets to probably about 10 or 11 inches, we can start seeing, because his button is pretty big, so that means he needs a pretty decent sized loop. Um, but honestly, that is also a little bit of an overlap. So you can kind of play with it. We're probably not going to get quite done. I will show you how to. How is Denny's cord attached to the needle? So at the very beginning, we tied an overhand knot. The other end of a... No, that's not the question that oh, he's asking. Through the needle? It's so this cord, like if you buy specifically this cord that, that I showed you guys, um this one. So if you specifically buy this beaded cord, the needle comes attached to it. Like there is a needle on the end of it. It's just like a piece of wire that it's been looped through. So this specific cord is made for pearl knotting. That's what it's like. That's what it's produced for. Silk cord for pearl knotting. Um, but it is the needle is attached to it. Otherwise, you can just use thread with a blunt stitching needle would also be fine. Like a a triple aught harness needle if it fits through your through your bead or just a a beading needle. I would suggest a non sharp one. Because you're going to poke yourself a lot if you have a really sharp needle. Yeah, I know I would have already a bunch of times. This is kind of neat. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed. It seems kind of therapeutic. It is. Beating is awesome. I love it. I wish every... Like every... 12 to 15 months, I get a hankering to do a little bit of beading, so I'll, I'll, I'll do some weaving, or I'll, I'll do something, but usually I maybe make some earrings. It's always a fun one. Jen, that uh, passed away last December that worked here. She was our in-house master weaver and um, she'd been doing it probably for 25 to 30 years. Uh, she'd been doing it for a really long time and she taught most of our classes and she would always, she, she went to retreats. They have beating retreats guys 
where you just go and like they would rent a cabin and she would just beat all weekend with her friends or they would have like classes where they would have special instructors just like for leather or yeah just like for leather they would have like instructors that came out with these really amazing pendants or snowflakes or whatever these beaded designs and she would go to a retreat and take classes with these you know renowned bead artists and she would build the little kits that they put together and I know I saw some pretty amazing stuff that she did. She did. She'd make little animals uh -huh. like beads and stuff. I so remember. she loved dollhouses. That was her other, so she was our Lego friend. And then she also really liked dollhouses and beading. And um, she loved to bead little critters. That's what I got going on. She loved to bead little critters for her dollhouses. To make like, she had uh, like snowflake men or she would have little... Uh, little cats and dogs and all sorts of little critters. It was really cool. I got to reset my camera screens. Danny moved. Danny moved. Oh, I'm so No, no, sorry. you stay where you're at. No, I have to move again. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you are getting the pink fossil stones in. Um, Andrea, you just want to shoot me an email because I don't know. I don't really keep track of the bead ordering. <laughs> and I could look and see if we've got it or if it's on order. We do, there are some stones, like we try to keep, I think, six and eight millimeter in certain stones kind of just on hand. There are things that we order, but a lot of the stones that we have, you know, we buy, when we go to Tucson, we'll just buy what we see that's cool, and that'll be the only time we buy it, and then once it's sold out, it's out, and then the next year when we go, we'll find some more cool beads, and we just rotate through that way. Uh, yeah, Michael, we can engrave stone on our lasers. We don't engrave metal, but we can engrave stone. We had um, like just some like little flat rocks. Like Kevin would cut, uh, he would cut up some rocks for cabs. And if the piece came out and it wasn't one that he wanted to get some cabs from, we just have like these little uh, stone plates and we'd take them back to the laser and they'd laser all sorts of little animals or sayings or just cute little things in them. Yeah, Crystal, yeah, Jen did, she did all the weaving. Um, not on a loom, she didn't do loom weaving. She did a little bit, like she could. Her mom did quite a bit of that, but she was into the freehand weaving. I don't actually know if that's what it's called, but that's what I'm gonna call it. <laughs> Freehand weaving. The freehand weaving. Good. I think Denny would agree with you, Crystal, that his therapy is tooling leather. Yes, it is. <laughs> I like to lace leather, too. Lace you do like to lace. I think that's great. Drive some people crazy and keep some people from it. Denny, did you do anything fun this weekend? Cleaned out a shed. Oh, yeah? That was great fun. Was it? 
it had my wife used to have a swimming pool one of those above ground pools in the backyard okay and she had this some sort of a chemical it looked like cocaine <laughs> in like 50 pound box <laughs> out in this shed and a mouse or something had gotten into it and chewed a hole in it and it would just everywhere. oh no so, that doesn't sound very epa yeah. friendly <laughs> It wasn't me friendly. I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, it wasn't me. Friendly. How's your How's your uh, grandkids doing? My grandkids are going a hundred miles an hour. Yeah. Cheap, 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 cheap. You guys remember on Friday when we were doing the trading cards and Denny got the like three phone calls from his wife. So eventually we answered the phone because we thought something <laughs> terrible had happened. But turns out Denny was just a grandpa and she just couldn't wait to tell him that he had baby chicks. <laughs> so did you have a chicken that then No. Or she, did she just she go to the store? She'd been <clears throat> Or did she, she order wanted them? these Americana chickens. That's okay. what they're that's the breed of them, is Americana because they lay blue and green eggs. Oh, the Easter eggs. Yeah. But uh, she'd been hunting all over for them. She got some that were called cinnamon queens. Okay. They're real pretty little chicks, but they're going to grow up into big old red ugly hens. You know? But but they just lay just plain old brown eggs. She couldn't go for that. Of so. course not. Chris would really like some chickens, but our situation is not chicken friendly. friendly. You know, because we have five dogs and they would yeah. eat those chickens. Or at least, anyways. And so he... He really wanted chickens for a while, so he was looking into it. And we found this adorable breed called Silkies. Uh-huh. Have you seen them? And they've got this, like, cra- they just have, like, crazy feathers everywhere. And they're kind of a little bird. And I think they also lay fun-colored eggs. Uh-huh. Um, and they are just stinking cute. So one day, or maybe his dad did get some chickens. So I wouldn't put it past Chris to just buy some silkies for his dad because his dad doesn't really want it. they're like no we need to have all the eggs we need regular size eggs they're very just like this is a production situation um but chris is just like i want cute little birds <laughs> you know if you built yourself a good coop the dogs could get to them yeah yeah but you know t- yeah. i don't i don't have i don't have time i know i don't have time i know we can only do so many things yeah I mean, I have Luna. She's so much. She's a pretty, she's a pretty needy animal. Wow, Ralph, you became a whole decade older in one weekend. That's impressive. You sound like you're busy. It's a long weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Probably here in another beat or two on Denny's. I'm going to show you guys how to end it. Okay. And uh, and then we can just because this is gonna this is gonna take a minute, <laughs> but we'll we'll show you how to complete it once you get as many wraps done as you want to do. Get under that needle. Are you watching this? <laughs> well, what else am I supposed to do? Are you watching this? I, th- I thought I was shooting? alone here. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. You get the new bamboo shoot. Uh, no, not oh. nearly like they ought to. Sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, have, I have the solution for Liz's bamboo problem. We have the same problem. Yeah. How are you doing with it? I'm watching it grow. <laughs> you wait till the day. I know it's about that time. Although I am, last winter was pretty extreme, and either that or I have neighbors that started to spray my bamboo because I feel like I have a lot more dead shoots or like dead stalks. Yeah. Than I should it have. Seems like it to me too. Did you? Okay, so maybe the winter was just kind of extra harsh, um, because I do feel like I have. Because usually sometimes the tops of it will start to go brown, but the bottom is still green, and then the rest of it will kind of come back in the spring. But I have, like, half of my little bamboo forest is mostly just brown stalks all from top to bottom. All brown. Is it from top to bottom? Do you think we 
gotten lucky? Maybe. Yeah, I'm hoping. I mean, I definitely still have some, like, green ones out there, but I feel like just a lot of them are fully brown. And I don't... I don't... Oh, he turned the big 60. You're still just a spring chicken, Ralph. That's right. All right, Denny, I'm going to let you finish that, and then we're going to we're gonna show them how to wrap it up. Should I take it off if it's a little... Mm, no, I think it's okay. All right. Perfect. Thanks. So... Once you get as far around as you want to go, or as long as you as as long as you want to go with this, you're going to get that little bead secured on there. There we go. So you're going to then tie this one off. You can tie it off just the same way we started with a knot. Um, some or you can take you can tie like a knot here and then you can kind of pull it up into your final knot if you want and then tie it again there just to doubly secure um but honestly if you do put a little bit of glue on it it should stay just fine for you so oh yeah we are gonna take it off so we'll finish it up we're not going to tie this actually off because denny's not done <laughs> i'm not <laughs> you know you're not done <laughs> mary june well it might go around her little wrist once It'll be close, not quite. Yeah, probably not quite. It is, it is pretty close, though. Yeah. So, alrighty. So once you get to however far along you want, you're going to, once again, tie this one off. And then at the end of your, whoa, whoa, whoa. At the end of your bead, you're going to do an overhand knot. Just to place that. So... Get that kind of tuck this last bead in there. Sometimes that is a nice reason to graduate it because that last bead sometimes will want to pop out with the tension, but it's usually all right. So you do that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, how big is my button? And you're going to be like, okay, I have to have this much room for my button to go in. So then you're going to kind of pinch it there and then you're going to tie another knot. And make sure it comes up to that point. Exactly. Yeah. Make sure it comes Yeah, before you start cutting things off. And um, one thing, if you are just kind of making these generically, you can make them adjustable. So you can have the one and then you can tie another one. So that if somebody, you know, were to get it and they need a little bit of extra room, they could have two adjustment points. Um, if they become large wristed. Like exactly. Them. Yeah. So like in this one, I did. I put. Oh, yeah. I put two adjustment slots in there, even though I was making it for myself. And then I still even grew out of that. What the heck happened? <laughs> I don't even understand. How do your wrist get so fat? It's Maybe ridiculous. Your core trunk. Yeah, that didn't happen. Okay. okay. Yeah. So then, so then, once you're here, then it just then loops you just right over. The cord off. Yep. Right and then there. you just clip the cord off, and then I would put a little bit more super glue there. Okay. Just super glue is great because it's going to soak in and secure everything. You want to use just like a one little two drops of super glue. We have something here called Bead Fix, which is just super glue. Um, but then that's, that is it. And you have an adorable leather wrap bracelet with a fun button. Have fun with your button. Because that's usually like, that's what I put at the top. So don't think of your button as an ugly closure that goes on the back because it's uncomfortable to sit on. But that's the part that goes on top. So find a cool button. Well, I probably have enough room to, to go a double wrap on that. Don't yeah, for her. that's what okay. I was planning for oh, you. Okay. You can go around twice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that then. All right. Yeah. Cool. Hillary, I, that, that's what I'm going to say. It's from years of typing. This, all the muscles yeah. in my wrist yeah. from years of typing. Wrist muscles. Yeah. Yeah. Those good things. Or like pulling my dogs back on walks. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. They all have pinch collars. They can't pull that much. And they Those show themselves. Those little things that go mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. It's the only thing. Because when we first got Miko, the husky, we were like, oh, Molly always wore a harness when I, you know, I, I have a that lab mix that everybody has. So she always had a harness and we'd walk and it was fine. And then we got Miko, the sled dog, and uh, you put a harness on him and he's like, well, all right, let's go. <laughs> well, I'm ready. Uh, pull it. And uh, at one point we had him and his brother 
And, and like, I was trying to walk both of them, and I got home one day, and I was like, Chris, those dogs are going to pull my arms out of my sockets. Like, legitimately, they were just on their back legs, like, rearing as hard as they could, like, jumping down the road. And I was like, okay, this is not working for me anymore. So we started looking it up, and the pinch collars are amazing. So you get those pinch collars, and they don't, they they don't, don't pull. They look, they look really cruel. But they're not. They're, they're not, because the first time a dog, it, it just kind of grabs them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the first time a dog does that, they say, wow. Yeah. I don't think I'll do that. Yeah. No, it makes the walks a lot better. And then if we do come across other animals or other dogs or people, Miko's really good with people. He really wants to meet all the other critters, though. He does like to, he, he whines. He's a whiny baby. And he just starts, <laughs> like, whimpering when he sees other dogs. And I'm just like, eh, I don't trust other dogs. And I don't know. And so he, uh, the pinch, like, it. It keeps them right with me, and it doesn't pull my shoulders out of my sockets. So when I lived in Grand Junction, I lived kind of out in the country, but there were a, a lot of houses, you know, interspersed. But there was this guy that had a, a Malamute, I guess it was. Mm-hmm. But he would ride his ten-speed bicycle by the house every day with this with the the Malamute on a leash wrapped around his wrist. That scares me. And the people down the road had a cat. <laughs> one day he was riding down the road, and this cat crossed the road. And I was I was out in back, and I was watching this whole thing. Cat crossed the road right in front of him, and he had the he had it on this wrist. The dog was on this side, and the cat went that way. The dog went around in front, and when he hit, the, I mean, he was going a hundred by the time he got to the end of the leash. When he hit that, he just end over ended that guy on the bicycle. I yeah, never, never saw him ride with. No. <laughs> no mm-hmm. Never did that again. <laughs> never did that again. Oh, look. Brenda approves. Mimics the mother nipping when they misbehave. Yeah. yeah. All righty, guys. So that's it. If you guys want to see my graduated version, Tony can give us the overhead that's real fast. So. Pretty. Yeah. So that's what I got going on here. Then I'll just continue. I'll just intersperse probably one of these little fun beads every once in a while through my thing, but that's what I'm doing. So I'll do the same thing on both sides and then they'll loop around to the back with my really small uh, button so that it's not uncomfortable. So that'll be at the end. And then, are you guys ready for what we're doing on Friday? I just can't even contain it. I'm so excited. (laughs) It's gonna be so great. Oh, beads. I need a couple of them. Yeah, we'll we'll get you some beads. Wee. All right. So on Friday, we will be doing, not that one, that's the tooled one. So we've got this owl that we will be lasering into some, uh, this is the Tiffany Blue Lightweight Biker Leather. So... We've got this owl, and then we will be doing stone inlays like that. Uh, you can't really see it because it's really bright, but Tony's going to come fix it for me, or he'll do something else. It's going to be cool, you guys. Yeah, so this leather, we'll have this awesome owl on there. and Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Now you can see what you've got. Here. Oh, that's really close up. Yeah, so we've got six stone inlays to be putting... In the owl on this, and then we're going to be prepping this that we've got going on here uh, for a bag. So we have some things. Yeah. So we have ordered some dies for some bag toppers. So this will be something that you will be able to order from us here in a few weeks. The die should be on its way soon. We'll get some numbers made. So here in a few weeks, we're going to do this on Friday. And then um, I think in about a month, we will be finishing up the bag. This will be the front part of the bag. We'll do some handle toppers, and we're going to make a really awesome fringy owl bag so anyways this all we're doing the friday is yep we're just inlaying inlaying the stones stones. we'll be prepping the outside of the bag the the body of the bag so everybody join us on friday it's going to be one heck of a time we're going to have a great and then i also if anybody is interested i have kind of gone through and on friday i can we can talk about it but i pulled all of these stones and then we'll have this pattern this owl pattern that we put so if anybody kind of wants like 
I'm going to say like a little stone kit. If you wanted to do something similar, it's not going to be exact. I really only have enough to do one other exact kit, but then I had some different little wing options that I found today. So, um, yeah, I'm super excited and it's going to be really fun. It'll be great. So, um, and we got this owl design. It was a Adobe Photoshop, um, or just an Adobe, um, photo. image, photo image. Yeah. That we could download because we possess the entire Adobe suite here at Springfield Leather because that's we had, we need it to do all of our work. <laughs> um, the but anyways, bag toppers will not come fully tooled. Yep, the bag toppers will not be tooled. They will just be leather panels that you can then attach to your own bags once we have those ready. But they will have the tooling pattern that Denny has done here um, that you can download with it. So, in any case, I'm super excited. It's going to be stinking awesome. Stinking, stinking awesome. awesome. Yeah. Uh, alrighty. Well, that's a leather wrap bracelet. High five, Denny. Good job. Thanks for teaching me. <laughs> of course. Yes. You teach me stuff every week. It was about time I returned the favor. <laughs> alrighty, folks. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, we'll be switching over to Twitch for a tiny little after party. And, uh, don't forget about live shopping tomorrow. So, we'll see you later. See ya. Bye.